Welcome to our Shir, Parshas Tazriya Mitzura, Tavshin Pei Aleph. And I'd like to focus on, on the entire concept of the Mitzayra, which the Chazal tell us, and the parcha begins, V'zoz tia taira sa Mitzayra. So the Gemara in Erech and Davtez Vavon Beis says in the name of Rish Lakish, Amr Rish Lakish, V'zoz tia taira sa Mitzayra, V'zoz tia taira sa Motzi Shemra. It's talking about the Motzi Shemra, the defamer. Now we know that when we talk about the Motzi Shemra, in the Taira, it's talking about somebody who's Chayshid, his wife, and brings a laws against her, and it's false. So Maisi Shemra normally refers to somebody who's saying something which is not true, which is false. However, we use it interchangeably with Lashon Hara. When you say, why does the, what is the reason a person gets saras and he has to go Michutz Lamachana, it's because of Lashon Hara. Now Lashon Hara is even when it's true. So, it, you know, as the kids always say, you know, you say, uh, that's Lashon Hara, but it's true. Right? That's our automatic response. In our mind, we see the difference between Lashon Hara and Maisi Shemra. Somebody who's Maisi Shemra says a false thing, a person we understand, a terrible thing to say. <clears throat> the Lashon Hara, somehow in our mind, is not such a, you know, doesn't have that Chaim Hadin. So how do we understand the nexus between the Motzi Shemra and the Baal Lashon Hara? Now, Pashup Shad is that both them denigrate somebody. True, not true, but it's lowering the, the, another person in the eyes of people, that itself is a shrek l'chazach. And that's why it's so usher, both Lashon Hara, even though it's true, and Maizu Shemra. However, I would like to say something else. I'd like to give it a different spin, and perhaps say that even Lashon Hara really isn't so true as we think it is. And I'd like to say two things. One is something we've said many times in the shir, and that is we know that the when the atonement time comes for the Mitzayra, so one of the things he does, he brings a korban, a shnei tzapayim. He brings birds. And the Shaila Rashi asks, of course, the Chazal asks, why birds? All, most karbonists are animals. Birds is if you can't afford the animal, you take the bird. But here it's a bird. And we say the reason it's a bird is like Rashi, because birds tweet, pit put. Right? Just like birds uh, tweet, when they shouldn't, they just keep pit, 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 pit. So therefore, the person who speaks Lashon Hara, he's babbling. He's saying things he shouldn't be saying. He's not thinking of every word. We know it says the Yerikiri, Yerushalayim, used to every word. They would count every word. They were they didn't say a word. Gedayli is so fine. Don't, every word is Gechaz. It's a Mechai. You sit in their presence. Every word is Gechaz. So you know that they, they don't say anything. This is Tam Narish, Kait, Tam Lashon Hara. You got to be very, very careful what you say. But I heard another shot that a bird <coughs> flies in the air. And we've heard there's a thing called the bird's eye view. What's a bird's eye view? A bird's eye view is that the person is a bird is able to see what a person can't see. So if I'm on the ground, I'm able to see 100 feet this way and 100 feet that way. The bird sees 1,000 feet. And therefore, of course, Baruch is telling us something. It's telling us an important lesson by having the carbon be birds, that you don't know everything that happened. You have limited vision of an event. You see an event, you see what somebody does, you see what somebody says, and you think you know what happened <clears throat> and what the event is all about. But you really don't. Because you just saw a slice of the event. The Chavetz Chaim said that you know people lose their amuna because of certain events in Jewish history. But they, he says, we live in one little slice of time. How can we judge the Rebbeinu Shalom's thousands of years of Judaism through our little 70 years, 120 years? But we're taking a little slice and we're judging. So the same way when we see somebody do something, we're ready, jumping in to say Lashon Hara. We say, but it's the truth. Maybe it's not the truth. Maybe you don't know the whole story. Maybe if you knew the story, you'd be careful. There are entire books written on this topic of stories that happened where somebody thought he knew what was going on, and, and you don't know what's going on. Sometimes it can be years, decades, diarists later, until you find out what's really going on. So the bird tells us that, and he doesn't see everything either, by the way. He just has the bird's eye view. He has more.
<laughs> than us. But he also doesn't see the whole story. But he sees more of the story. So the bird tells us that we should realize we're only seeing part of the story. Now that can mean in two ways. One, it can mean that we think what's true is not true in the um, objective sense. But it also means not true in the subjective sense. That maybe we didn't realize a person's uh, background that brought them to do this. We didn't realize a person's, maybe he has a, a, a disability that brought them to do that. You know, uh, I told you, I once said that there was a, a person who uh, came over to me by uh, my son's bar mitzvah. And um, I was talking to somebody else, I didn't see him. And later on I found he had a tie on me. So I went over to him, I said, uh, I apologize, I didn't see you. He said, oh, that's fine, you didn't see me. I didn't realize, I thought, you, I thought, you know, he didn't realize, you explained it to him, and it's a whole different story. So sometimes the event itself is not what you think. My, I remember uh, after hearing this story, so my wife had a friend, and she said that uh, somebody was telling her that she's very mad at another person, she never says hello to her. And uh, when she says hello to her, she doesn't say hello back. And then she found out the person's hard of hearing. So sometimes you think you know the truth, you don't know the truth. And that's, I think, the lesson and what really brings the Baal Loshon Hara together with the Baal Maitzi Shemra. It's not that the difference is that one is where you're making it up totally, and the other one is you, you, you're telling the truth. One is you're making it up totally, it's true. But the other one, you think you're telling the truth, but maybe you don't know the truth but you don't know the background, but you don't realize it. And that's what Pshat and Mishnah it says in Pirkei Avis, it says, uh, Yeshua ben Prakki Nita Arbeli, Kapal Mehem, they said, Asei l'cha rav, uknei l'cha chover, v'avidon es kol adam l'kav schus. So the first Pshat is that, Asei l'cha rav, uknei l'cha chover, you need a rav to teach you these mistaitis of Dan l'kav schus, you need a chover to sound out if you're, you know, sometimes you, you come into your friend, you're all, bent out of shape, and you're all upset, you man. and then the friend says, well, let me look at it, let me replay the events differently, and you say, oh my gosh, I didn't even think of that. But also, that's one shot. But also, as Havidan is, call Ha'odam Lekavskos. You have to judge the entire person, Lekavskos. That means you have to look at the whole person. You have to make a checklist of that person. That person has a 100-point checklist. Does he give tzedakah? Yes. Does he say, put on tefillin? Yes. Does he daven? Yes. Does he give tzedakah? Yes. So, okay, so the 100 point checklist. So one, is he gruff? Yes. So 99 is good. One isn't good. So before you judge the person, because we tend to go right to the one thing that he doesn't have good, right to the problem. What about the rest of the person? So it says, have you done his call? That, you could just say, have you done Adam the Kafskus? Judge a person the Kafskus. No, done his call to Adam. In order to help you judge the Kafskus, number one is Asay Lucha Rav, who's going to help you see things in the right way. But done his call to Adam, the entire person the Kafskus. So there's a famous story with the Apta Rav. Everybody knows the story, but I think I think there's another on the Kuda to the story. There was a businessman who fell on hard times. And he came to the Apta Rav and he said, I have to make a chasna. He said, you need to make a chasna, I don't have money. So he said, oh, how much do you need to make the chasna? He says, I need a thousand ruble. Oh, okay, fine. How much do you have? How much do you need? He says, I have one ruble left. So the Apta says, one ruble, that's it? He says, that's, I have one ruble? He says, okay, I want you to do the following. I want you to go to the marketplace tomorrow and I want you to take that one ruble and the first business deal you're offered, grab it. And you'll see. So he goes to the marketplace and he spends the entire day going, trying to do business. Would anybody like uh, to make business for a ruble? And they're laughing him out of the place. Nobody's interested. So he's very depressed. He's very dejected. He goes into an inn to a restaurant to, you know, they called it inn in those days, to have, a, have some supper, and, uh, whatever. So uh, he, there's a group of uh, rowdy businessmen at the next table, and they see him sitting there depressed, and they think he's a low yutzluch, he's probably uh, some homeless guy, and they're making fun of him. And they call him over to the table, come, you know, come sit with us. So they say, well, you look like, uh, you know, what are you here for? They say, I'm doing business. He says, oh, really? Oh, well, maybe we're interested in doing business with you. How much money do you have to invest? He goes, one ruble. 
So they start laughing and they're making fun of him. They're making like, ah, one ruble that you yeah, that's some businessman. So one of the guys to play shtick says, Okay, I got an idea. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna do business with you for one ruble. I'm gonna sell you my oilam haba. And they're laughing, they're guffawing. And he says, Now I'm gonna do it. And the guy says right away, he was told by the Apple Rub, grabbed the first deal. He says, You got a deal? I'll pay a ruble for your oilam haba. So they all, they sit down, they make a contract, and he sells his Zaylam Haba. And they're laughing and so on. So the fellow comes home, and he walks in the door, and the wife says, I want to get. He says, what, what do I do? What do I want to get? He says, I heard already, the whole town's talking, that you sold your Zaylam Haba for ruble. I don't want a man with no Zaylam Haba. And he says, oh, come on, it was a joke, it was this, it was that. But if you're the type of person to sell your Eilam Haba, you're not the type of guy, I, I, I don't want anything to do with you. I'm going to the Rav. So he says, no, 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 I'll buy it back. I'll buy it back. Okay, if you buy it back, we'll stay married. So he sends one of his friends uh, back to this, this Yid, and the friend goes and says, you know, we, we thought about it, it was just like a joke, but you know, maybe it wasn't such a good idea, we calmed down a little bit, you know, maybe they were drunk a little bit or something. He says, I'll buy it back for 10 rubles. He says, no, uh, 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 I don't want 10 ruble. So he says, how much do you want? I want a thousand ruble. He says, a thousand ruble? Are you crazy? I thought, that's a lot of money. He says, listen, let me tell you a story. I went to the Opta Rov, and the Opta Rov told me I should take the first deal that I get, and how, and because I needed a thousand ruble for making a chasna. So the guy says, okay, I hear the story. Okay, let me go back to the Balabus. I'm going to tell him the story, and I'm going to come back to you with a thousand ruble. And he comes back to him with a thousand ruble, and the balabas, the wife says she's now very happy with her husband. Now you, you did the right thing, and they give him a thousand ruble. And this year goes off to his make his chasana, and the person is in, uh, he's a thousand rubles poor, but maybe he's a thousand rubles richer. So the wife says, listen, this Rav sounds like a real tzaddik. I want to go see him. I want to, I want to talk to him and ask him what's shot in this whole mice. So she travels to the Opta Rov and, and she says, I'm the wife of the man that this, here's the end of the story. And she says, let me ask you something, Opta Rov. Is my husband's Olam Haba really worth a thousand? Is it a thousand rubles? That much money to buy a thousand rubles? So he says, let me tell you something, lady, or missus, or whatever. So let me tell you something. Before this story happened, your husband's Eilam Haba wasn't worth one ruble. After the story happened, and he gave it, and he made this fellow's whole chasna, a thousand rubles is way too little for his Eilam Haba. He's got a lot more Eilam Haba than a thousand rubles. So I hear this from Rav Yitzhak Sturm, told over the story, he said, this is the Pshat and Kol Yisrael Yesh Lam Chelik Lam Haba. Everybody's got a Chelik. But some people have a one ruble Chelik, and some people have a thousand ruble Chelik. Everybody's Lam Haba is a different Lam Haba. It's a tremendous story with a tremendous lesson. But what I got from this story is something else. Is that to make fun of another person, what they did to this Yid, in making Chayzer from him, making him feel so bad, he lost his Eilam Haba. His Eilam Haba wasn't worth a penny. And that's what Chazal tells us. Hamalbim Pnei Chavero, Berabim, Ein lo Chelek Eilam Haba. doesn't say that in a lot of things. There is other Averas, which people take a lot more seriously. And it doesn't say that they lost their Chelek Eilam Haba. Somebody who eats something you shouldn't eat, gets an Avera, it doesn't say in Lochelik. But here it's in Lochelik Lailam Haba. That's how serious it is to denigrate, to hurt another person. So we see from our, our Parsha, Zayus Tia Tairus Amatsaira, Zayus Tia Tairus Amatsi Shemra. The Matsi Shemra gets a whole Parsha, Tazri Amatsaira. We say two Parshas, which are basically focused on, on the Masapra Lashon Hara? Wow. And the answer is yes because that goes to the core of who we are as people and how we work with each other and how we treat each other. 
there's a bein oylem, bein adam lechaverim, bein adam lemakom. They're, they're <laughs> we 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 put them on the, on the, the same level, right? There's bein adam lechaverim, bein adam lemakom, and I goes baruch when the bein adam lechaverim is also bein adam lemakom because that's how Hashem wants us to behave. So how careful we have to be in what we're doing and the way we talk about people and the way we deal with people to never chas v'shalom deal with them in a way that we're going to lose our oilam haba but the chas v'shalom we're going to become a mitzvah we might not be a mitzvah of the tires of mitzvah it doesn't we're not worthy of being mitzvah anymore but we can still be a spiritual mitzvah chas v'shalom and it's so easy and therefore that's what they said asay lecha rav kne lecha chavr you need to take what you're doing and think about it. And even if the Rav's not there, and the is not there, think about what the Rav would say. Think about what the Chavr would say. And be very careful. And think about what you're going to say before you say it. And Mirza Hashem, if we'll all do that, then Parshat Tazriya Mitzvah will become Parshas that we lane and not Parshas that we become part of. Bainshim should help us with siyata deshmaya to know of everything that we speak and everything that we think and think twice before we speak. So have a good Shabbos and much atzlacha.